Hi, divers. Alec Pierce again, Sea Hunt Remembered. I'm back again with another little tidbit about collecting Sea Hunt memorabilia. Again, as I've said many times, what I would like to do is, number one, get you to appreciate that fantastic TV show. They got so many of us, millions of divers into the sport, and also maybe get you interested in collecting. Doesn't bother me. I have a great collection, largest in the world, I'm told, and uh, so they say anyway, and, uh, and I'd love to talk about it. I love to share Sea Hunt, my Sea Hunt items with people, and if I can get you interested, I think that's fantastic. Maybe one day you come out to one of our scenarios. Yes, you get to jump in the water with old Sea Hunt type gear on and fight with a giant anaconda. We do. We have our own giant anaconda. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Anyway, uh, I want to deal with one very small aspect of uh, Sea Hunt memorabilia. Uh, in this particular episode, and specifically I want to talk about Mike Nelson's watches. Which watches did he wear? There weren't Swatch watches, I'll tell you that right now. They weren't around at the time. Uh, however, there were two watches that he, that he wore. I don't want to make clear, by the way, that when I say that this is what Mike Nelson wore, this is probably what he wore 90% of the time. They were sponsored by Voigt. They used Voigt gear largely. But I know very well, and some of you see nuts out there, some of my buddies, if you say, well, he used to wear this watch, I know it. That's fine. He may very well have done that. But generally speaking, Mike Nelson wore one of two watches in the episodes. Now, I can show you those two watches, first of all, on the Dell Comics. So if I can just get Kevin to zoom in here a little wee bit. And we often use pictures, the Dell Comic pictures, or other pictures from his ads, uh, interviews, and so on, to help us to verify today, 60 years later, almost 60 years later, to verify that what we think is what he used is, in fact, correct. So you can see in this particular picture from this comic book, Dell comic book, that he has on his arm a watch. Okay? Now, by looking at that very carefully, and this is what sea hunt nuts do, they magnify and look at it very, very carefully. Finally, they would figure out which, which watch it is. And as it happens, this particular watch he has on his arm is a very well-known watch. It's a watch that you can still purchase today. Not an original. I'm sure there are some originals around, but they would be very, very expensive and hard to find. But you can purchase a very, very good reproduction, replica of the U.S. Navy, what was commonly called Canteen Watch. The Bureau of Ships, this was a watch that was issued or that you could buy at that time. If you were in the U.S. Navy, and we're talking again the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, this is the watch that Mike Nelson wore. It's called a canteen watch. The reason it's called a canteen watch is very simple. If you take a look at how the crown is protected, you see there's a little screw cap that comes off and it flips up like so. Like a canteen. If you've ever had a, a, a little liquor uh, a, a vest pocket bottle or a small canteen, you may recognize this. A little cap folds down over top, and then you screw the cap down to keep the liquor in, or in this case, to protect the crown. That's why it was called the canteen watch. That's fastened on with a small link. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward watch. Easy to read, black, with very highly fluorescent uh, 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 numbers and hands on it, and, uh, and a simple winding watch. No, nothing fancy about it, no date. It did have a canvas strap, military issue type of canvas strap. Stainless steel buckle went through and you adjusted it for your, rich, uh, your wrist. So this is one of the watches that Mike Nelson wore very commonly. A lot of the episodes, if he had a watch on at all, it very often would be this U.S. Navy, USN canteen watch. If you're interested in learning more about this watch, more details about it, or maybe even acquiring one, just Google. We're so fortunate today we have Google. 15, 20 years ago, more than that, when I started collecting CM stuff, there was no Google, there was no eBay. It made things a lot more interesting. I met more people, but uh, uh, today you can just Google it. So just go in there and Google U.S. Navy, U.S.N. canteen watch, and you'll find these. Maybe you find an original. Call me if you do. So that's one of the watches that Mike Nelson wore. Now, he didn't always wear that particular watch. We know from pictures that he wore different watches as well. One more time, Kevin, I'll get you to zoom in here perhaps. You can see here's this exciting picture of Mike Nelson climbing this rope ladder at night, intent on getting up to the service and finding the bad guys and stopping them, whatever they're doing in all this episode, I'm not sure. But you can see it on his wrist. He has a different watch entirely. This obviously has a steel band, a stainless steel expansion band. Very common type of watch for scuba divers. That stainless steel band with the adjustments in it so you can make it fit over the wetsuit or on your wrist. It's more of a dress watch. The canteen watch was for working. This watch is more of a dress watch. And once again, 
First of all, from talking, actually talking to some of the staff members, including Lloyd himself, not me particularly about this watch anyway, but I'm talking to some of the staff members, the CHUP members, and from the pictures, then we discover that in fact this particular watch that Lloyd wore quite frequently was very simply a Rolex. That's right. Now I suspect, which was quite common, that the Rolex company gave Lloyd Bridges a watch to wear in the Sea Hunt episodes. They did that a lot. They gave James Bond, whoever was playing James Bond at the time, um, uh, a Rolex watch. So this is a watch, the other watch, the other watch that Mike Nelson used a great deal. Straightforward, stainless steel, standard uh, 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 Rolex stainless steel watch with the adjustments. And again, very, very simple. This does have a date on it, as most Rolexes did. It also has a rotating bezel, very common with the dive type watches. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, Rolex watch. And now when I say straightforward, <clears throat> the two things uh, that I want to clarify. First of all, these are not rare. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. However, they're terribly expensive. Old Rolexes cost more than new Rolexes. I can never quite figure that out, but uh, I do understand a little bit being, being a, a, a baby boomer myself. Uh, old stuff is sometimes worth more than new stuff. <clears throat> but uh, they're certainly not inexpensive. You could pay thousands of dollars, and hundreds of thousands is, is not unheard of. Thousands and thousands of dollars for a good quality Rolex. This watch, however, I want to take one more second to talk about this particular watch. First of all, this is not Lloyd's watch. This is the watch, that, the same watch that he wore, but it's not his watch. It's not the one that he wore. All of the scuba gear, most of the scuba gear anyway, that was used in, in the Sea Hunt episodes, is lost. It's gone. At the end of the show, uh, it was destroyed. Through the show, a lot of it was destroyed. When it was finished with, it was uh, thrown away or sold. Ziv uh, was a, 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 a budget-conscious production company. How's that? And that's nice way of saying cheap? Yeah, okay. So they were budget-conscious. It's, it's an interesting thing to know that the first issue, the first episode of CM was filmed in color. Yeah. Film in color, one one episode. And some people say two, but we know for sure the first one was. And then uh, and then uh, they discovered that it cost an extra ten thousand dollars to film it in cover in color. Ten thousand dollars more for color. <laughs> At the end of that, so all the other episodes were black and white. So I don't want to say that they were cheap, but they were cheap. And uh, so uh, they didn't store stuff. They didn't keep stuff. Uh, you know, they wore it out. They wore it out. So by the end of the uh, 155 episodes, uh, uh, anything that had been around for 150 was, was pretty much worn out and garbage. They threw it out. And that applied to almost everything. Almost everything. We don't really know of any scuba gear that exists that was actually used by uh, Mike Nelson or any of the other divers, quite frankly, in the, uh, in the Sea Hunt episodes, with one exception. And this is another reason why I think that it's quite possible, quite likely, that the Rolex company gave... Uh, Lloyd Bridges, the Rolex watch, and he chose to wear it occasionally in the show. Maybe that was a condition, or maybe it was understood that if they gave him a Rolex watch that he would wear it in some of the episodes, which he did. But anyway, this, I, I take it, was his personal property. Uh, consequently, it was not thrown out. It was his. He kept it and wore it and used it. And this watch is still in existence today. I saw it not a long, long time ago. I saw it on Jeff Bridges' hand, on his arm. Jeff Bridges, you see, as you know, I'm not, a lot of you know Jeff Bridges, a uh, very well-known actor, uh, um, uh, Oscar Award winner, Academy Award winner, and a musician as well, and a wonderful family, a typical Bridges, wonderful, quiet family. You never see them in the, in the uh, rag sheets. You never read about them in the, uh, in the magazines about Hollywood. They're very quiet, very loyal family type people, wonderful family, all of them. And anyway, it was shortly after uh, Jeff Bridges uh, won his Academy Award that he was on one of the talk shows. I am I'm pretty sure it was uh, um, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And, uh, and Jay was asking him questions about it. And he mentioned, Jay mentioned to, uh, to Jeff Bridges that Jeff had got his start in, in, uh, in acting on Sea Hunt. That's quite right. When, uh, when uh, Jeff Bridges was only four or five years old, five, six years old, he started on, there's another story about that which I'll share with you too, but uh, he, he actually started with his uh, father, uh, Lloyd Bridges, on Sea Hunt, a little boy that lost his bicycle, and uh, Mike Nelson found it for him, and s some other things are not quite as good as well, made him an exciting episode, but anyway, uh, Jeff Bridges has the watch, this watch, that's his dad's, makes sense, his dad's 
Rolex. And he had it on that night when he was on the show with uh, with uh, Jay Leno. And when Jay Leno asked him about his dad, how he got started in Sea Hunt, uh, Jeff got started in Sea Hunt with his dad. Jeff was very, very proud of that fact. And he had the watch on and he, sh he showed it to Jay, made a point of it. And he held the watch up and said, here's to you, dad, giving tribute to his father for getting him started in acting. Having Jeff having just won the Academy, pretty neat, huh? And he had that watch on. So that's why this watch is uh, kind of interesting for me to think about that fact. I think it's wonderful. Uh, uh, typical of, uh, of uh, Lloyd Bridges and the whole Bridges family. And you know, it fits right in with the character of Mike Nelson as well. Mike Nelson was always a good guy. Mike Nelson never uh, hurt anybody unless he deserved it. And, uh, and he always fought for the little guy, the kids, and uh, did his best to help any way he could. Old time, old time America. Very, very nice. Anyway, the watches. There's the Sea Hunt watches. Best of our knowledge. And Mike Nelson wore two different watches, the Canteen watch, which you're going to research, and, and then uh, the Rolex watch as well. I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of trivia and a couple more things from uh, Sea Hunt Remembered. I'll talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce.